Welcome, I'm Ed Dominguez, and today we're getting wild with the Lewis's Moon Snail. We're here on the shores of Puget Sound, part of the Salish Sea, at low tide, because that's when you can find this largest of all marine snails, the Lewis's Moon Snail. The Moon Snail has a beautiful spiral-shaped shell that comes to a point that's blue, and the inside has beautiful colors and a glossy surface similar to an abalone. Low tide is the best time to find these creatures, so let's explore and find out a little more about them. They can be found from Vancouver Island south to Baja, California. Here we have a moon snail, Neverita lewisii, moving along the beach. The moon snail is in the phylum Mollusca and in class Gastropoda. Gastro meaning stomach, poda meaning foot, literally stomach foot. Here you can see the foot, technically the mantle of the snail, is out and surrounds almost half of the shell. The foot can expand to up to four times the size of the shell. How does the moon snail do this? The muscular foot is full of hollow passages called sinuses. The moon snail can fill these with water and then expel the water rapidly, which allows it to have propulsion along the ocean floor. When the mantle of the snail is out of the shell, it pulls water in through a siphon, technically a hyponome. Here you can see the siphon extending with a black border. Water's pulled in through the siphon and over the gills, which lie between the inside of the shell and the mantle itself. And this is how the moon snail extracts oxygen. When disturbed, say by an approaching predator, the moon snail can quickly squirt the water out of the sinuses, shrinking its foot and retreating inside of its shell, which it seals tightly with a piece of calcium carbonate called an operculum, like a tightly shut front door. When on the beach at low tide, keep your eye out for operculum. Holding them up to the light reveals the intricacy of the patterns, and the beauty of the amber color. Other cool anatomical features of the moon snail are the cephalic tentacles, and what's really rad is the radula, the toothed tongue. Located above its propodium, or head, are the two cephalic tentacles, sensory organs that can detect light and dark, movement, and chemoreception chemical trails from other organisms in the seawater. The tentacles can move independently and are fully extended when the snail is under the water looking for prey or a mate. And now on to the tongue-toothed radula, a ribbon-like organ bearing seven rows of teeth that is used to scrape and drill a hole into the shell of its prey. Then it inserts its proboscis that secretes enzymes and even hydrochloric acid to dissolve and then suck out the innards of its prey. And here we have a radula. This example is from a related mollusk, the gumboot chitin. Notice the rows of razor-sharp teeth working together in a zipper-like fashion. The proboscis extends, retracts, and then the radula comes out. The teeth are always sharp, for they regrow from the base as they dull at the tip. It may take the better part of a day for a moon snail to drill through the shell of a bivalve to reach the prey inside. When beachcombing, look for the distinctive countersunk rim that tells you a moon snail has had a meal. Have you ever seen these strange rubber-like collars on the beach? It's a story of which came first, the snail or the egg. In fall and winter, moon snails are in deep water but in spring and summer, they move to the inner tidal zones to mate and lay their eggs. After mating, the female holds the fertilized eggs inside of her shell for protection. Then she burrows into the sand to build a distinctive egg casing called a sand collar. A sand collar is a protective multi-ply egg sandwich. The female turns upside down and extrudes a layer of sticky mucus. The mucus contains thousands of eggs. She then uses her foot and shell 
to push the mucus layer into the sand on both sides, creating a protective barrier. After about six weeks, the eggs hatch into larvae called villager. As the sand disintegrates, the larvae are released into the water column. They drift as plankton into deeper water where they feed on diatoms and sea lettuce. Later, as they grow, they sink to the bottom and take on the carnivorous behavior of adult moon snails. Adult moon snails live an average of two years and have few predators, only sunflower sea stars and other adult moon snails, but they do face a challenge. The Lewis's moon snail and all shellfish are endangered. Ocean acidification is the problem. How does the ocean become acidic? Three main ways. One is natural. In the summer, offshore winds blow from the land out over the coastal waters and push surface water out to sea, which is replaced with upwellings of deep ocean water. Deep ocean water is more acidic because of the breakdown of organisms at depths causes the water to become a more acidic. Two other reasons, though, are human-caused. One is runoff from agriculture and from residences that use phosphates and nitrogen to keep grass green. That runoff goes into the ocean, creating algae blooms. Algae use up oxygen and create more acidic conditions. And the third way is fossil fuels, CO2 released into the atmosphere from factories, automobiles, fossil fuel burning. That carbon works its way into the ocean either by following stream courses and watersheds, falling directly out over the ocean, or carbon molecules attaching to raindrops, acid rain, and precipitate. As the ocean becomes more acidic, it means that there's less carbonate ions for these shellfish to make calcium carbonate, which is their shell. Shellfish are an important part of the overall aquatic food chain. Fewer shellfish, fewer forage fish, fewer fish that we depend on for food. Commercial fisheries, indigenous people's fisheries, recreational fisheries, all are affected. Ocean acidification is a real problem, but the good news is, collectively, we can all be part of the solution. The Lewis's moon snail and the Salish Sea. Thanks for joining me. The world of nature is waiting for you at the beach. So get outdoors, stay curious, and join me next time for more Getting Wild.